And we are live here at the Cooler Master Studios in Brea, California. Um, I'm sitting here next to me, someone that you probably will recognize if you've uh, already backed the Kickstarter project, Lance Madsen. He's the the uh, the brain behind Aimpad, <laughs> if you will. Yeah. Um, so, Lance. Yeah, thank you very much uh, for the introduction. Yeah, so Lance Madsen, uh, my official title is the Principal Engineer of Awesomeness because that's what I engineer is awesome. It's a pretty cool title. Yeah, thank yeah, you. I, I, I made it up myself. I yeah. wish uh, I'll let me have to write my boss. Hopefully I can get a cool title like that someday. Um, it's better than Cooler Master Peon, right? <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> um, even though it's still more fun being a peon here, you know. Yes, of course. Get to play video games, get to hang out, get to do live streams with someone like the... Uh, Awesome guy, Lance. Right. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, we've, I've been here about a week now, and uh, we've wrapped up with some videos and things that are coming shortly that uh, you'll see for what we've been working on. But uh, yeah. I think we had a fair amount of questions and things that uh, people have been wanting to know yeah. the answers to, and I, I don't know if we want to just jump right into those. Yeah, we basically or... have a lot of questions on the comments, and I know um, Lance has been very active dropping off um, you know a lot of an answers to people but we wanted to do this live stream to kind of connect more with you guys uh, see if there's a way for us to you know um, answer some burning questions that you have so I think yeah let's jump right into it um, let me be all official here like a like a news reporter absolutely yeah tap it on there um, now this first question um, well first do the questions on reddit because um, I think it's those are questions that will kind of really get you in the get you in the swing of things not too intense, okay. um, but this, but this actually, this this first one is going to be kind of um, very important. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Very, very, very important. Okay. Serious. Um, so, on Reddit, uh, enigmatic, I don't know how to say his name, but um, he wants to know, what's your favorite color? My favorite color. Uh, it's a tough one. I know. I'm starting. No easy softballs here. Okay. What's your favorite color? Uh, I'm gonna have to go uh, midnight green. I don't know what that is. I don't either, but it's a dark green. Dark green. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he, he could have just said dark green, but he tried to confuse us and go midnight well, green. Well, I mean, I could have given you the whole hex values of what it specifically. It... That could have helped. Okay. It's uh, going to be uh, <laughs> X0378. No, just kidding. No. <laughs> okay. I wouldn't be surprised because, he, as I said, he's a smart guy. He's an engineer. You could have just ra ran off some numbers and I would have believed you. I'm, so. I'm sure. All right. So next, number, number two. Um, a little bit more, and this might be a question for me. So actually, right. not for you at all. That's fine. So, I'm okay with that. Um, when will Control Pad be available for purchase? Mm. Um, so the backers ob obviously have uh, most of them have received it by now. Something like 95%. If you're the Do 5%, we even know what Control Pad is. You know what? That's actually a really good question. Yeah. Uh, do we cut to that on the screen to show at least what we're talking about with Control Pad? All right, Lance. How about you? How about you walk us through what Control Pad is? Sure. So Control Pad is basically a twenty-four key uh, keypad, but the uh, looks are a little deceiving. So this is not just your, this is not your grandpa's keypad. This okay. is something new. Um, so these keys actually, uh, all twenty-four of them have the ability to sense how far down you press the key. Okay. And you can use that for different things like movement in games. If you want to control a vehicle, or if you want to sneak around uh, when you're trying to play some spy games or something like that. Um, but all of them are, are mappable to both analog functions and digital normal functions that you would use for games. We also have these scroll wheels up here that uh, allow you to control different parameters of volume or backlight brightness, but also lots of other pretty cool stuff. But all right. yeah, that's more or less in a nutshell what it has. Also this nice little magnetic wrist rest so you're gaming in comfort. Detachable. Detachable, right. Also, by the way, and magnetic, so maybe do that a few more times. Yeah, it's like... It kind of feels good, it's right? It's a very satisfying snap. Yeah. There you go. Um, control pad. Yeah, basically, uh, for for me, being a gamer, obviously there's a lot of people that, you know, that are creative professionals that can use it for a lot of different things. Uh, for me, being a gamer, what I love about it is it, you're basically... Games come built in with that functionality, right? That con that analog control, right? Uh, basically, if you use a controller, and what I love about Control Pad and Aim Pad is you're able to basically unlock that function, use it as a uh, as a keypad, and still use a mouse. Right. Yeah. That's the most important thing for me when I'm playing. I still want to have that fine tuned control with a mouse, be able to aim, be able to do stuff like that. So I don't want to use a controller. 
And then here, all of a sudden now, we have a device that gives you fine-tuned movement of your character as well as fine-tuned aiming camera work. Yeah, because it always seemed like when you're gaming, you either play with a keyboard and mouse and your aiming is awesome, but your like movement with the keyboard is kind of janky. Or you'd have to sacrifice and like, well, I'll, I'll use a controller and your movement's nice, but then your aim is just pathetic. So it always seemed like you have to compromise some way, but this kind of bridges those two things together. And so that, that was actually where the name aimpad came from. It was a game pad that you can aim with. It's an aim pad. Look at that. I, I know, it's amazing. It's genius. And then from aim pad, now we have the control pad. Now we have control pad. You can control with it. Exactly. Dude, this is some next level stuff here. I agree. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. <laughs> so... Now we had we we so to, so to this question when will Control Pad be available for purchase? Mm -hmm. um, we did Kickstarter, so this was a Kickstarter project, um, and we just recently shipped out to all the backers on Kickstarter. Um, so for those people, they have it; they're happy. I think probably most of them are the ones we see in the channel right now um, that are leaving some comments. But um, for everyone else that doesn't have it or didn't back it within the funding period, um, to answer your question. I will have to say coronavirus. <laughs> Cor that's coronavirus. The answer to that's the answer to everything right now. Um, you know, it's actually very serious. So we're, you know, we're trying to make um, you know some light of it uh, in a little bit. But in all actuality, coronavirus has delayed a lot of stuff. Um, originally, it was supposed to be basically launching the end of this month, beginning of April. Since all the factories shut down, um, stuff didn't get made, and uh, you know, shipments didn't go out. So we're probably looking around May. Yeah, probably at least a uh, like a month delay kind of. So um, we will obviously on Kickstarter and on our social media channels, uh, we will be posting it out. You know when it is available for purchase. But right now, the tentative date would probably be around May. Yeah, yeah. So, so you know, coronavirus, act of God, nature, science, can't really nothing we can really do. Yeah, just no. try to be safe. Everyone be safe out there. You know. All right. Yeah. So next up, I'll do another very serious mm. paper press. Um, where can we download keycap templates? Oh, that's a good question. That's a good question too. Is this another me question? I mean, uh, yeah, probably. Yeah, this is like a me question. But I think I might. Uh, what we can do is probably actually show you because we do have a place right now that you can download. Right. Can so, I take us there? Oh, okay. Well, actually, I don't know if I even know off the top of my head. Um, um, is it like slash control pad? Watch this totally not be it. Yeah, we could have probably prepped for this beforehand. <laughs> exactly. That's not it. Um, but wasn't it like on, on the Kickstarter? Yeah, like, I did, yeah. A... Well, actually, I think if we just end up doing um, control pad. No. Um, so you know what? Just control pad? Like... Can control pad. Just do control pad product page. Sure, it's like that one right that there. See, <laughs> he is the Why expert. Why overcomplicate? I know he's the expert of like googling stuff. I don't know what to say. Uh, they call it Google Foo. I the believe. Google Foo. Yeah. Yes. Um, so actually, right here we do have some on our website already available for downloads. On downloads? No. No. It's actually on a landing page. Uh, we will get that link for you, and we will share that in a little bit. But the answer is yes. We do have um, a portal right now available. We end up having a blank keycap set that's available right now for mm. download, as well as an Xbox set, um, which I believe is what you're rocking right now. Yeah, this is like, uh, these are just the blank keycaps, but you can tell they kind of look right. Yeah, show that right up into the camera. Yeah. Get a little closer. Yeah, yeah even like see. right there. I mean, so I don't know if it's terribly out of focus, but it's basically an Xbox controller template, and these were just printed off on a normal printer and cut out. And you just have these two parts that separate, and you stick that piece of paper inside there, and it looks really nice and clean. Like it's, it looks like they're just normal keycaps. So. Now, this is a question not necessarily asked directly um, from when we were asking for questions, but it's a question that I saw many times throughout the course of the Kickstarter: is why Xbox? Why, why Xbox? these Xbox controls? What's the purpose of that? Um, Maybe you can explain a little bit. Why should we have Xbox, um, you know, keycaps for the Relegionables? What does sure. that actually do? Yeah, so the, the whole 
whole way that we make it easy for developers to use control pad in their games is by making this look like an Xbox controller. So when you plug this into the computer, you don't have to install anything, it just automatically installs as an Xbox controller. And the reason for that is because those developers, when they're design, deciding what type of inputs to support keyboard and mouse and controllers and things like that, um, they're planning on already programming for that Xbox controller, so why make things more difficult for them? Just plug in the device and present them another Xbox controller to use. So that way, it's very easy for them to add support for the device. Otherwise, it'd be like, all right, we're going to pay this developer $50,000 to have them develop for control pad, and then this one, another $50,000. It's just like, it's, it's expensive for us to implement, and it's yeah. time consuming for them, but if they're already <clears throat> developing for the Xbox controller, it's very simple for them to add support. Just add support for it directly. Yeah. Um, another thing that I think is um, for the Xbox keycaps is when you are playing a game, some mm. games, not all games, but they'll actually end up having, and I think this might be a question um, down here, but uh, we can address it, I guess, a little bit right now, is um, prompts. Yeah. Right? So when you're playing a game, um, especially if it's a new game, and all of a sudden it tells you, hey, press you know, A to sprint or do something, uh, B to jump, and you're like, wait, what? My control pad, there is no A or, or B. What do I do? So yeah. I think the idea behind that, too, is for those games, now it's not all games. Some games end up having it built in where you can end up, um, I believe so, right? Yeah, where you can sure. force whether you want to see keyboard prompts or you want to see controller prompts. Um, but for those games, for those developers right now that, as you said, are, are they already do Xbox. Um, for us, it's something like, hey, if we offer those templates for you, it could be an easy switch. So if you're using it for a new game, you say press A, or you can, oh, okay, I put my A on this key. It's easy right, right away for you to notice. Yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. All right. I want to address some questions in the chat. Oh, right? yeah, some questions in the chat. Let's go uh, for it. Core Ice asked, uh, what about software for Mac OS? Software for Mac OS. That's another me question. Well, I, kind of. I can help you. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you want to throw me under the bus. No, yes, uh, go for it. So uh, Mac OS is something that, that we definitely want to support. Definitely. Um, and there is support for Xbox controllers in Mac OS as well, uh, but I think it's generally for the creative types or people that might be using Photoshop or other creative applications yeah. that they want support for it so that basically they want to program control pad while using the Mac OS. So at the moment it's not possible, um, but the efforts are there. Uh, I don't know any time when that would be. It might be a Quite a while, but probably quite a while. And I know, um, as as Lance said, we definitely have plans for it. We definitely want to do it. Um, we did do a survey with the Kickstarter backers, and I believe it was something like three to five percent said they wanted it for Mac, and then the other like ninety four percent was for PC, uh, for Windows, and then the one percent for for like Linux, Linux or something. Yeah. yeah. So um, we want to do it. But I've just first to focus on, I mean, it's just a numbers game, I guess. Focus on the 95%. Um, the good news is, so what's what's the workaround for yeah. that? So fortunately, uh, all the configuration for Control Pad is stored to the device itself. So the, the device. it actually has memory on board. So you could dual boot into Windows, use Boot Camp or something like that, or a virtual machine and add this to that virtual machine while running an OS, a Mac OS, and then once you save that configuration to this, you can just unplug it, walk it over to another computer that is running Mac OS, and everything that you've pre-configured on there will, will work. So uh, it's yeah. not the perfect solution, but fortunately there is a workaround, so you're yeah. not completely hung out left to dry. I know, because I know we have we have um, you know received some 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 questions, some comments of uh, you know those backers that have um, pur purchased it. So you know we know at least there is a workaround right now. There is a way to do it, um, and it is something that we, as we said we plan. Um, this is really only the beginning. Yeah, for sure. That's what I'm saying. Everything that we end up kind of doing now with con with Control Pad moving forward is all firmware and software based. So it's really just sky's the limit. We can keep adding to it, um, and so it's definitely on the horizon where we want to offer that mm -hmm. Mac support. All right. Awesome. Any other questions from the... Yeah, and I think we could save this for the end, but I'm just going to ask it now. Fried Fork asked, how can I assign horizontal and vertical scrolls to analog control? I feel like maybe we should save that for the end and then where we could like dive into the software. Honestly, okay. I feel like we can do it right now. Um, let's hold off a little bit. Let's hold off on that one. So great question. We will get to it. Tease you a little bit, stick around, and we will get to that in a little bit once we start pulling up the software and doing a bunch of cool, cool stuff with that. 
I think I see Brom in the chat. Brom, the number... Filter, filter. I'm sorry, I know, I know. That's an inside joke with Brom. Brom, the number two backer. Really? The number two backer. Uh. Don't ask me how I know that, but I know Brom. That's a very unique name. There's only one Brom that backed us out of the 1,000 backers. So, Brom, pleasure to see you in the chat. Send us a question if you have one. Would love to, um, to hear from you. Um, so, okay, next up. Oh, I like this qu- question. This is a good one. Okay. Why use Cherry and Gateron switches? Oh, yeah. And why not other options like Kale? Do we have any switches, like, loose sitting anywhere? Um, I think I had that key tester somewhere. Oh, that key bag. tester would have been perfect. That key tester would have been really good. Well, okay, so we'll, we'll just imagine this. Uh, the difference with Cherry and Gateron switches is more or less the housing or the outer shell of the switch is transparent to light, and we're using infrared light to sense where the key press is, is being located. Um, but kale switches are either all solid white or solid mm. black, and you can't actually see through the enclosure. So uh, unless they offer some transparent versions of those, we can't really use kale switches. But Gateron and, and Cherry both offer those as part of their packages. So it's not so much the switch itself. It's more of like the housing, basically. Pretty much the housing. The yeah. housing. So with any other switch, though, um, besides, I mean, I don't know, there's a lot of switches out there. Uh, talking like blues and browns and that yeah, type of thing? Or? Um, I think that was another question down <laughs> about blues and browns. But in terms of, not so much in terms of linear, but um, besides Cherry and Gateron, like is there the housing, is is, ba- is it basically, that, is that the only limitation? If it's besides that, anything else would work. Sorry. Oh, the camera turned off. And we're back. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah black out there yeah i thought i thought we were finished i was getting ready to pack up and leave that was that was pretty fast <laughs> an hour already oh no, wow that time flies when you're having fun right i guess so uh yes but it's more or less the, that limitation just being transparent and having, okay so pretty much yeah. any switch if it was transparent housing yeah there, there are there are some switches that are better for analog obviously if you have a, a bump or a click in there it messes with having smooth control but uh, there are other applications, of, other applications of analog switches that don't rely on that. So, so that's basically what this guy just said. He answers. Look, he's like a time traveler. You answer mm-hmm. number five, um, which would be: Will brown and blue switches be available in the future? Um, I think there is a possibility that that would be something in the future. Um, probably not for control pad in this, like a new version of this control pad mm-hmm. would probably not work well, but. Um, if you were adventurous and you wanted to take it all apart and desolder it and put in your own switches, uh, that's an option. Yeah. So the answer is it does work, yeah. right, with brown and blues. Um, the Br- reason... Brown's probably not blues for sure. Really? Yeah. Um, I, the, the re- so, but the reasoning behind that, I think we kind of touched on it a little bit, but why do you think going with just red is better? Uh, I just think because... If you're trying to maintain analog control, um, if it's hard for you to position specifically where you want that key. If it like you push it in and it just kind of buckles underneath for a blues, for example, yeah. or if you have something kind of a little bump in the in the middle of the press, it messes up your uh, interaction with games and things like that. So right. So because if you end up having a keyboard where it's like a normal on-off switch, mm-hmm. right? You, that that tactile bump, if it's a brown or that click, that's kind of letting you know where you're pressing the key where it's actuating right um with aimpad you really don't have that it could be the whole press anywhere yeah yeah you could activate anywhere so having this artificial bump somewhere is kind of doesn't make sense that that, that doesn't make sense so i think that was the um yeah the main reasoning to go with red just having a linear switch um we have gotten feedback where people would still want browns and blues we had yeah we had someone um who thought they did order a brown Right. <laughs> on Kickstarter. <laughs> but no. But that, yeah, we never offered that. Um, I love how everything's like going to sleep all over here. I guess yeah. so. But, um, but that, that does bring up a question. There's another question that someone was asking about haptics, uh, if, if we'll have any yeah. haptic feedback with uh, uh, maybe a, a newer version of Control Pad. Um, so what that would basically entail is, uh, it, let's say you have an activation point, at the very, very top of the press. So you like you just barely press the key and it will activate something. You could actually have Control Pad give you some type of vibration or input at any point in that. So let's say you, oh, wow. you wanted it to have it 
right at the very top, you just barely push it and it will, the whole thing will kind of vibrate, letting you know you activated the key press. Um, or maybe it's one at the very, very bottom for rhythm games like Osu or something like that, that you need mm -hmm. that type of immediate feedback that you've registered a key press. Um, because you can activate it anywhere in that key press, you could have that type of feedback built into the device. I see. So it's basically, yeah, you can end up setting where you want that. So if you want it to be at the very bottom, if you want it in the middle. So you, even though you have a linear switch, you can make it a tactile switch, but have that tactile wherever you want it. Anywhere you want. All right. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. That's, that was a V2. good question. V2. You heard it here. V2. That's going to happen. Oh, no. Maybe. Oh, okay. no. We're just going to We'll look into it. Right. <laughs> oh, um, I think SD just joined, and he asked, uh, will it be possible to purchase the Xbox controller? I assume he means keycaps that were in the survey or default um, keyboard keycap separately. Uh, I think it would be a good time to, to mention again that we are we do have that website that you can print out your own. Yeah. Um, yeah would it be useful to like kind of show this? Yeah, yeah show it for sure. So th this is actually like just – a piece of paper it's that's all it is so nothing special about it and all it's done is just placed right on top of the keycap and eloquently done and then there's just clear plastic part that fits over the top of it so it sh just keeps it in place and it and I mean it really you'd have to look really really close to see any type of seam or ugliness so it, it's done very well. Yeah, that it's is just, done very well. Just a piece of paper. Yeah. Um, to answer that question, in terms of the Xbox One, I know um, all, all the extra uh, keycap sets that we have um, for that we sold. Well, you know, we had about about a total of five mm -hmm. um, with the FPS gaming, Photoshop, Illustrator, Premiere, Premiere Pro, um, and then just a milky white Relegible, which is the one you're using right here. Yeah. Um, all of them actually do come with a Relegible top cover. Right. So something that for sure we're going to um, put that on the website. In fact, I think we do have that already available for download, the Xbox One. Mm -hmm. um, we will get that link for you guys and share it. Um, that one is, um, yeah, basically available for download. As you said, you can print it out, put it on to uh, your Relegible keycap set, whichever one you do own. We will be offering those available for purchase on our CM store um, once, you know, coronavirus basically um so that's a little bit delayed of course but um hopefully later later uh next month we will have those in stock so for those that uh have purchased the control pad and might not have chosen to get an extra keycap set at that time because you didn't know maybe how it's going to turn out couldn't make up your mind um we will have those available for purchase and then yeah just what lance said you can basically end up creating your own that looks really fantastic yeah I mean, if you want to just have some type of lighting effect or whatever you can still do all yeah, that here, that's the page. We have it um, now. So I click. If you want to send me the link online so that I can post it in the chat, I can oh. do that whenever you Okay. I will send you it, and we will get that posted in chat. Okay. I don't know why my voice went up there like that. In chat. Um, yeah, I think your girlfriend's going to kill you. I know. I, she's probably embarrassed. I don't know if she's watching. But hopefully wait. not. <laughs> wait, what who? are we talking about? Ooh, what? Uh, okay, so moving on. <laughs> We will get that link. Um, our Chan, our program director in the back there, he's going to post that for us right now. Um, you'll see it. Um, so that, if you actually go to that site, there is a template section. Um, we do have, I believe, the Xbox One available right now. Yeah, I think so. Awesome. Yeah. Sweet. Number six. Number six, all right. Moving on. This is a really intense question, too. Okay, I'm ready for so it. So focus, Lance. I mm -hmm. need you at your top game now. Okay. We have, I don't know how many people are watching, but a lot of people. Okay. If a woodchuck could chuck wood, mm -hmm. how much wood would a woodchuck chuck? Uh, so, so I believe the correct answer is a rick. Not many people know this, but that's a unit of measurement of wood called a rick. Yes. That's how much a woodchuck could wood chuck. Woodchuck would be a rick. A rick, yeah. Mm -hmm. One. Look it up. It's a real thing. Only one, though. Just one, Rick. I mean, it's, it's, At a time. it's a wood chuck. It is an open-ended question, so we don't know how long he is chucking the wood for. That's true. It could just be one chuck, so he just chucks one Rick. <laughs> exactly. I get it. I like that. Okay, okay. Good. Didn't know what that was. I'm, I have some Googling to do yeah. later. Get on that. All right. Uh, I just want to say we have 43 viewers and 
Thank you all for coming. Feel free to add questions, and we'll be getting to them towards the end of the stream if they have to do anything with the software. Yeah, uh, yeah. For now, we're just going off questions from the For list. sure. Thank you, everyone, for for coming and watching. Definitely. Making us a little nervous. We have 40, 40, 40, 43 people right now. That's great. All right. Awesome. So now we're going to get into the meat of some of these questions. Now, okay. these ones are from Kickstarter. Ones we did uh, previously were from Reddit, so thank you. Um, Kickstarter, we'll just jump right into it. Are there any plans to release an SDK for the control pad? So what is an SDK, Kevin? That's a very great question, Lance. <laughs> so an SDK, <laughs> it stands for a Software Development Kit. So it's basically, that. yeah, people want to uh, kind of take advantage of the analog values of those keys, but maybe not necessarily in games. Maybe they want to use it in Photoshop or some music creative applications or things like that. Just some unintended uses of what's natively coming from there that they want to say, all right, we're going to have this piece of software that sits in between control pad and another piece of software and says, when control pad sends me this signal, I'm going to change it and make it usable in this program. Mm. Um, so it's really kind of cool, powerful stuff. You have to be kind of a developer or a, a coder to take advantage of that type of yes. thing. But um, yes, it's definitely something I think we should do. And I know that there's been discussions to, to yes. make it possible. And I think that's something, the nature of this product Right, where we especially put it out on Kickstarter to begin with, um, to get feedback, to get more people involved in the process of bringing it to life. Something like an SDK is really feels like the next step. It feels like, hey, we want to be able to have, uh, give more control into your own so you can make it yours, so you can end up like what you said. If they want to do stuff that maybe we haven't foreseen, kind of really, then if we end up making it open, um, that, that just the possibilities, the possibilities are truly are truly endless, endless. Yeah. so uh it's definitely in the nature of this product uh the philosophy behind it that's definitely something that we want to do from from the very beginning when we're reaching out and doing it on kickstarter um to have community involvement and i believe that's really is the next step yeah definitely. yeah so Absolutely. it's definitely something we want to do we have as we said we have plans for for that um it just basically time yeah so, as, and as we said pre previously, for those that might not have joined us, um, uh, control pad with the software and firmware now, it's really, we can do so much more with it. Mm -hmm. uh, the control pad is solid. It's now just implementing all of these features that, that we want to do moving forward. Absolutely. So, yeah. pretty exciting stuff. Baby steps, though. Baby steps, baby steps. Um, all right, so this was like, well, a few questions here. I'm just going to read the paragraph. Is the paragraph It's question? like a paragraph. Well, yeah, because it needs the setup. <clears throat> okay. I'm right. Ready. It needs the setup. If I just read the question, it won't really make that much of a sense. Okay. okay. When I press down a key, <laughs> it has to travel maybe one to two millimeters before it registers anything. And then pressure sensitivity wise, it starts off a bit strong. Like in driving games, as soon as the stroke is registered, then the acceleration might be half power. Is there a way to make the keys register sooner? higher on the key sooner or higher on the keystroke also is there a way to make the power curve a bit more linear oh, i see i see right okay for instance starting very soft and gradually achieving maximum power when pressed down fully okay so that's a pretty meaty question meaty but we can uh dive into it just a little bit all right um, so maybe it, there, there was another question that someone had at some point about setting up um like what would you do to actually set up the device for a specific game. Yeah. So we can kind of meld those kind of all together. Um, so uh, if you can see my screen. Yeah, basically, I think the last question we received where he's talking about Wolfenstein. <clears throat> yeah, right? so I think I had Wolfenstein up and running because who doesn't like to kill Nazis? Uh, we... I do. I love it. Okay, Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> so what we're going to do is I'm going to set up this profile too. And the first thing you want to do is look at this from a perspective of the profile. Like, what does this profile want to accomplish? So this one, we're going to say, this is the Wolfenstein profile we're going to set up. Um, so we obviously want to give it a name. Like, so, kill... Like Nazi killer or something. Kill Nazi. Zip. So we're calling it Kill Nazis. Um, and once you have that name set up, basically what we're going to do is go to key mapping. And there's presets that are set up on here for certain uses. And I'm just going to have it for gaming and first person mode. So by default, all that does is just make this left analog stick be on these four keys. So if I push up, down, left, and right, it's going to have a gradual movement of 
that analog stick. And then the rest of them, we're just going to keep them all the normal default keyboard keys because okay. it, it responds well that way. Um, so we click on apply and now that profile is active and ready to be used. Um, now if we go into Wolfenstein, there, let's just show you. Yeah, quick. let's just show them. So what happens is by default, Wolfenstein has this dead zone or a space where if you try to push the key in just a little bit, and I'm pushing in right now, nothing's actually happening on the screen until I get to a certain point and then it starts to move. So uh, it's kind of a jarring effect that I'm pushing the key down, why am I not moving? It doesn't feel very good. So what we've done is we've added uh, the ability to use Steam. So this is just a, the normal Steam integration uh, that's used for the Steam controller, but they've enabled Xbox controllers to take advantage of it. Um, and what you can do is have a lot more control over what the, the analog feel and, and nature of is going to respond in certain games. So for this one, we're going to have this anti-dead zone. What that does is make it more sensitive so that if you just push it down a little bit, it's going to increase the analog value immediately. Um, and then the other thing you can do is mentioned about different type of uh, response curves. So you can have full control over exactly what that curve would look like. So if you want it to be more sensitive at the, at the beginning of the press or uh, more of a gradual response, or as they said, the linear response, yeah. you can set all of that. And once that's set and applied, um, when we go back into the game, uh, now I just barely push the key in and it will start already to respond. You moving. Yeah. yeah. So this game has some really cool things that I, I kind of want to show off from an analog perspective. If I were to approach this, uh, this box, what you can do is, uh, this key right here is set to Alt, and that's the default control to basically hunker down in a, a spot and now based off of how I push the key in all these different directions I can peek around a box or underneath the box or however I want to uh, based off of how I push those keys so this has a really kind of a nice tactile or not tactile it says something else tac tactic Tactic? Ta ta tactical. Tactical. It's a, it's a tactical. That's the word you're looking right. for. Tactical. So, um, so it, it's really a, a cool way to, to play this game. If you want to sneak around and, and like pick off people, um, it feels really, really cool with analog control. But you, you don't get that with a keyboard. It's all way up or way down or left and right. It's not the same type of response of, oh, yeah, two guns. It's oh, two wow. better than one. Wow. Um, yeah, so it's it's a really kind of cool game for, for analog control. I think we hit all the, wow. the points. Wow, that, that was super meaty. Yeah, that was a deep. really deep question. Um, I think let's let's go a little bit more into just why that exists in the first place. Um, I think you know you're saying dead dead zones. Why oh, yeah. are there dead zones? What what are those? Is that is that a control pad thing? Is that a game thing? What is that? For sure. So, yeah. So the the issue is uh, on Xbox controllers. After you've had the next box controller for a year or something, just the joystick itself is gonna kind of have a wobble to it, and it won't like stay right in the middle. It'll always okay. be kind of offset. So what happens is if a game developer doesn't put in a dead zone, it means as soon as you plug in that Xbox controller, your guy's going to start walking off and wandering all by himself, even though you're not touching it, because that stick is worn out. So a control pad actually doesn't have that issue because it's just a, a single key press, and the springs in there are, not, are always going to return it to the very, very top of the press. Right. So you don't have that limitation. Um, but it exists in the game. There's like it, the developers like, well, you're using an Xbox controller. It's going to wear out because so. it's recognized as an Xbox controller. Right. Right. So basically, we just have to overcome the limitation that Xbox controllers have by just kind of forcing it to ignore that dead zone. Um, and that's that's more more or less how we accomplish it. Or what was okay. Going so through. it's basically these games um, because they're programming it for an Xbox controller. They're assuming that you're using an Xbox controller mm -hmm. that has analog sticks. And so there's a built-in dead, dead, dead zone. But by using the Steam integration, you link the control pad to Steam, yep. uh, you end up getting a lot of options to customize basically your experience with a controller. Exactly. Basically. Yeah. And so you're able to remove that dead, that dead zone. So that pretty much answers this dude's question where he's saying, hey, I'm driving, but I notice I'm going one or two millimeters down, nothing's happening. Yeah, exactly. And so if he's using Steam to play, boom, you're able to kind of adjust that dead zone. Yep, and overcome now, all those limitations. Now, is there anything that we can do on, let's say, if someone's not using Steam? Right. Yep, and that's that's a common uh, thing. There, there are ways you can add non 
Steam games to Steam, and in a lot of the cases that is a viable workaround. Um, but there are, I mean, I guess people do buy games on Epic Games. I, I've heard it's possible. It's, I think so. Like I'm, five people, maybe. I, don't I'm, know. I usually just get the games for free, but um, <laughs> <laughs> so a special guy over here, right? Uh, no, everybody gets them for free. Come on, <laughs> stay on top of things. But, but more or less. Um, it's something that needs to be added to control pad. So on on the MK850 where we were first introduced the aimpad technology, uh, there is features on there that counteract this this uh, issue. Um, it just hasn't been implemented on control pad yet, okay. but it, it should be coming shortly. Yeah. And then it doesn't matter what platform you're gaming on, it will yeah to correct that issue. So it's basically a software thing. Totally software that will be added. And um, just another disclosure, our software team, um, as our Kickstarter backers would probably know, our software team. Uh, is actually located in Wuhan, China, hmm. which I've was the that. epicenter of the coronavirus. So they have still not returned to work. Um, I think they're still all working from home, but um, maybe at only a 30% capacity. So I think that's why um, a lot of these features that we're talking about, where we're like, hey, we have plans for it, it's coming. Just of what's happening in the world right now is why some of this stuff is more delayed than it should be. Right. Um, so... With the dead zones, you have the option right now, a workaround basically right now is to um, add it to Steam as a Steam controller and you're able to adjust those dead zones um, using their, uh, you know, their integration. Um, and then in the near future, through our software itself, right. you'll be able to adjust the dead zone as well and the, sens and the sensitivity. Exactly. Like that curve, basically what that one guy was asking for. Mm -hmm. All right, sweet. That was a really meaty question. It was. But it was great. Thank you for that question. Um, and we were able to really explain and show some gameplay of what that actually looks like. So. For sure. Could you explain, so the next question, moving right along, could you explain how to use Control Pad with auto hotkey and or bind special keys like G or mouse 3-4? Uh, three, 3-4. Four? Three, four. Boy, yeah. So auto hotkey, for those that are unfamiliar with Yeah, because I have no idea what that is. So it's basically like a, a scripting language that basically it's very very powerful i mean really? whatever you can think that you can do in windows either physically like with a mouse and you move your mouse and click on a certain button or you have key combinations that issue certain commands to certain programs all that stuff can all be automated for you with just like a single push to the button macros we're talking macros pretty much macros on steroids like wow. it's ridiculous so um yeah i mean it, it can even like look at the screen and say oh well Go click your mouse on the area that is of this reddish color, and it will click it for That's you. That's amazing. Just weird, crazy stuff. Science. <laughs> yeah. So um, how? So what's coming? It's it's not officially here yet, but um, there are keys of these. The F row. You have the F yeah. one, two, and all the way up to F twelve. There's actually these unknown keys of F thirteen through twenty four. Okay. That are additional F keys. So if you really want to give that F to someone, you can. Um, it's basically it's a joke. It was, yeah. it was, that, was, that was a good one. Thanks. <laughs> or, or if you wanted to pay lots of respect. Um, so more or less, the whole point of it is there, there are keys that aren't on your keyboard. So Virtual you're, you're not going to accidentally press right. them, right? They, they, they exist in Windows, and Windows is aware of them. But um, if you can assign the control pad, there's F12 through 24. You have you could actually make this an F pad. <laughs> <laughs> an F Because there's 24 like keys that. on here. So you have F1 through F24. Is that version 2? No, no. It's gonna, F, it could oh, be built into oh, okay. this. I'm saying making it the F pad. The F pad. Maybe. Okay, maybe, yeah. maybe. Right. But more or less what you could do is for those other unknown keys, that since they won't conflict with other programs, since they're not aware of what the F key is, you can say, well, I'm going to use auto hotkey. Anytime I push the F13 key, do this magical thing and it will automatically happen from just pressing the single button. Okay. It's not quite in the software yet. The, the hardware is capable of understanding it, but there's no way to actually specify that I want that to yeah. be the F13. And I believe it's also already in the firmware. I believe we already kind of rolled that out, Yeah. but it's there's just the software side. There's no way to access that right now. We would need a software tab yeah, or, or some sort of pre like preset the keyboard. Yeah mapping things so you, so you can click on f13 it. and say i want that key to be f13 but yeah without going into super detail with it um it's 
it's it's a really meaty subject. Yeah, because he's saying how to use control pad without a hotkey. Like but how? That's... What I would do is say yes. Yeah, assign one of these as the, an F thirteen through twenty four key, and then make your macro execute off of that. Okay. All right. So, and of course, um, I think what we should say um, throughout this whole thing, if you want details of any of this stuff, you can feel free to contact Lance directly. Yeah, for sure. Here's and my that's email. Not, that's not a joke. Here's my cell phone. That's no, an no. actual thing. We will give you a cell phone. It's no, 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 well, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. So it's uh, Discord is probably we Discord. started to grow a kind of a Discord community with the Kickstarter backers, and it, it's been fun interacting with them. And they have like very detailed questions. It's way easier to give you support when you have complicated questions. I can give you a yeah. screenshot or things like that. Um, the easiest way to get on our Discord channel, if you go to aimpad.com slash contact, there's a link on there that has our Discord channel. You just join there. What was that one more time? Aimpad.com slash contact. Aimpad.com slash contact. You got it. All right. Discord. Discord. Click on that button, mm-hmm. and you can talk to this man directly. He's, like, famous. You, you want to, to talk to, to a scroll famous scroll down guy? a little bit to see it, yeah. but, uh, yeah. So I think, and I think that actually brings us to another question that was way down on the list. But since we're just meandering our way through this bad, sure. this 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 bad boy, um, where is the best place to leave um, feature requests? Yeah. So actually, there is a channel in that Discord in channel Discord that has feature requests, and there's been a good number of people that have already provided yeah. input and feedback and uh, good, really good ideas. So, really good yeah. ideas. So obviously, a lot of the feedback we have received um, pre previously that have really resulted in direct changes to control pad to the software uh, would be through kickstarter that's yes, how we had, uh, you know a, a originally la- launched it um a lot of messages um I've, I've i've been the guy um behind the scenes with a lot of the direct messages so if anyone out there has you know messaged me you've talked to me and then comment section is mostly lance because those are all the meaty questions. Yeah, as long as it's as long as it's not about shipping, because I don't know anything about shipping. Yeah, I don't know who that shipping, guy is. That's, that's, some... yeah, that's totally not me. Right. That was some other dude. Right. Yeah. He got let go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, but no. Um, yeah. So I think uh, definitely that place. You could obviously still leave comments um, on Kick Kick Kickstarter. You know, we do read them. Um, but in terms of an overall place, probably Discord would be the best place. We compile all that information, we package it up nice and neat, and then we ship it off to the software team. <laughs> and then they <laughs> receive it. And then they it receive up, it, open like, it up, huh. and be like, hey, they want the F, F you know, they want the, the F13. They, they want the F pad, so let's make that happen. <laughs> oh, I love it. All right, so um, that was a good question. Next one is another question that is gonna suck and it's like the same it's almost like that's kind of the theme of this which a lot of softer base and it's all it's coming that's pretty much what it is it's coming is there a way to remove a program you added to the open with exe oh so what is open with exe what is that okay well so this is actually kind of cool um so on the profile tab you can see um this open with exe section the whole purpose of this is to basically make it so that if you switch to a profile, this EXE will launch. Um, so, why would you want to do that? Um, so, if let's say you want to use this for Photoshop, you can have it so that when you push the key, it switches to profile Photoshop. one, your Photoshop profile, and automatically launches pro- Photoshop for I you, see. and the keypad is ready to use Photoshop for those purposes. Okay. Um, so that when you click on it, um, something that you may not know, actually. Not it's know. not limited to just EXEs. It can be something else. So really? there was a Kickstarter backer that was uh, asking about, well, how can, can I have it launch my batch files? Okay. For those that don't know what batch files are, there's, they're kind of like auto hotkey, but like built into Windows. It's just like a, a bunch of Windows commands that you can have run. So by default, it shows this e- executable.exe. Um, what you can do, which is secret known stuff, if you put, uh, Star dot star. It's really tiny on the screen. I know. I don't know if I can make that any bigger, but when you have that this giant, screen, did nothing. <laughs> hey, let's make it really big. Wow, does that help? Um, <laughs> regardless, uh, if if it, on your desktop you had something like uh, a batch file, where did it go? I thought I put it on here. Maybe they patched it out. Hmm. Or I don't. Anyways, let's just say you had you had a batch file. Okay, on your there is a batch file on the desktop, of course. I yeah. must have moved okay. it somewhere, but you can have it run the batch file instead of an exe. You okay. just have to tell the file name to be star dot star, 
And then what will happen, uh, let, let's do like this for fun. So anytime I switch to this profile, what's gonna happen is it's gonna launch a Boom. program. Boom, it like launched. that, right? Um, so this is our testing software, so you can see it do fun stuff. But regardless, um, right now there's a bug. So there's someone who was asking like, well, okay, so I've gone through and I mapped these things and I'm tired of it ma automatically launching this when I launch the profile, so how do I get rid of it? Uh, right now, it's kind of complicated, but I'll show you. Just okay. for fun. So it's complicated, but it will not be in the future. It will not. Ideally, what's going to happen, and I don't think it'll be too long. You just like right click it and just clear it out. Yeah, there'll be just a, we can add a button or do something to software. It's like, oh, okay, we just don't want this anymore. But since someone mentioned it, we'll put it in here. Um, so what you do is you go to profile that you want to correct or get rid of that, and you give it to a file name. So we're just going to call it profile on the desktop. Then if we go to the desktop, oh, I know why it's not here. This isn't my computer. I was oh. like, I had this set up on my yeah. laptop. Okay, anyways. Yeah. Um, this is this is what the whole configuration looks like from a Maybe move it a little bit to this. Well, I don't even think they can really see it because it's super tiny. Super teeny tiny? Yeah. I'll move it over here yeah, a little move bit. Yeah, over there, though. But there's a section in here that talks about launching this export path. All you have to do is just take out... Just delete it. The stuff in between the quotation marks. Then when you save it and then go back into here, you're going to import that profile again. So you're basically exporting the profile, editing the profile, and then importing it back in. Yes. Without the path. So it's a little, um, it's not ideal right now, but as we said, software wise, coronavirus. <laughs> it's not working. <laughs> oh, and that's not even working now. Yeah, but that. It, it, it'll, it'll work. Maybe if you turn it off and turn it on again. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking, yeah, because it didn't actually, oh. Was it that one that you needed to do? Yeah. Well, I thought I did, but who knows? I'm going to try one more time. It doesn't work. Yeah, it, it worked. worked. It worked. Right, it I'm worked. I am still he a genius. He is a genius. <laughs> All right. Anyways, so that, that's the workaround for now if, if you happen to come across this. But hopefully that won't be in the software oh, yeah, much longer. Issue again. Uh, uh, we're in the uh, 70s now. I think. Cooler Master Purple. Oh. You know what? I like it. I think it looks cool. As long as we're down at the very bottom, I guess we're not too distracting. So this is why did this happen? I don't know. This is life. <laughs> it's coronavirus. It's live TV. I think that's the coronavirus. <laughs> I just, it's a blame the camera. for everything. Yeah, that's the blame for everything these days. Um, I think this is a bug, a software glitch with Elgato, if I'm not mistaken. Hmm. That does something with the camera. So Show we'll just be button. purple for a while. I think last time it just kind of cleared up on its own. Um, but whatever. We'll just be purple. Purple's fine. I, cool Master Purple. It's not my favorite color, but Midnight Green. Cooler purple. Master. Oh, that's right. Purple's my favorite color. Obviously. Because so, I work at Cool Master. And I'm paid to say that. How much? <laughs> a lot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, Okay, so anyways, we'll just move on along. So okay. yeah, just to sum up, that the open with um, EXE, that's something that will be implemented where you can basically just remove it. Um, yeah, with the software. Uh, right now, there's that workaround that he that he gave. If you didn't catch everything that he was doing, where did we go? Apad.com slash contact on our Discord channel. On the Discord channel. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Are you already working on a way to make the control pad work for any game? Can you, mm. can you explain why it didn't work in Battlefield 5 when my Xbox controller did work? So this is something useful, I think, to share. Um, so sometimes people have an Xbox controller already plugged into their computer, and uh, they also have control pad plugged in. So what happens in that scenario is you have two Xbox controllers presented to the system, and only one of them can be player one, and the other one is going to be player two. So some games only respond to inputs from player one, um, and what has to happen is uh, you want control pad to be player one if you want to use it. So you can sometimes trick Windows in, by unplugging both devices and waiting a little bit and then just plug in control pad first and then it's like, oh, you're player one now and then everything will work fine. It, sometimes it doesn't work and you have to restart the whole computer with just control pad plugged in and it will take care of it. But uh, we have some software on our website on aimpad.com slash downloads that um, you can go and get this software that will test what is the player. So when I push the, these, uh, I need to go to an analog profile real quick. Um, 
when I push the analog keys, there's a little semicircle here in the middle that says player one, player two, player three. So if I were to go ahead and grab an Xbox controller and plug this into the computer, another thing would show up here for player two when I move the Xbox controller inputs would be corresponding to it. So this just gives you a visual representation of what the game would see as the inputs. And so if you run the software and you're showing up as player number two and you're having problems in that game, that's probably the first thing that you want to correct. Just make sure it works in here first and then it will probably work in the game. So make sure you're player number one. Got to be player one. That's the, that's the number one rule. Got to be player one. It's, Control a, it's, it's a limitation with Windows, unfortunately. Um, we did talk about Steam integration. There actually is a way that you, regardless of what Windows says you are, you can say, uh, I want this device to be player number one. It will force that to be player number one. Uh, we, I can show you on Discord if you want. So that so that's through Steam integration as well. And as you mentioned previously, we we have made um, we will be releasing a video um, within the next few weeks uh, about Steam integration. Yeah. Um, we didn't cover that specific topic, but um, that kind of shows you the capabilities that what you know what you can do through Steam. And apparently, there's like a lot. Uh, Every yeah. time I saw anything that Lance was doing, I was like, "Hey, we should make a video. Hey, we should make a video." Because right. it's just it's so much that you can do that really you know unlocks the potential of um, Control Pad. For so, sure. um, so in terms of that, okay, that's probably the reason why it wasn't working for this person in Battlefield Five. Because as you said, it does work in Battlefield. It 5. definitely works in Battlefield. It definitely 5. works in Battlefield Five. Yeah. Um, I know it works in Battlefield Four. Yeah. Then you said Battlefield Five. Yeah. So. I know also, um, but this is the beginning of it, the first question because it does, Control Pad might not work with all games. It may That's, not. That is a true thing. So, um, but, are I you, mean, by, by a blanket statement, any, any game that recognizes the Xbox controller, it's going to technically work, but um, it may disable the mouse or may, make input a little bit weird for the mouse. So. Yeah, and now why is that though? Uh, just because when a game developer is developing the game, they don't have the concept of someone's going to have an Xbox controller in their left hand and a mouse, and a in, mouse the right. in the right. It's just like, that, no one's going to do that, so why even think about it? Um, so we're trying to help change their mind and their perspective of, you know, there actually is some purpose for having analog movement and precise aiming movement, or precise aiming with your mouse at the same time. Um, yeah. But it's, it's going to take a little bit of time to get them to all realize that. So... Um, until that happens, we're, we have to either just wait for them to patch it, to, to correct it, yeah. or um, just wait over time for it to fix. Yeah. And that's basically where um, Cooler Master, where we kind of come in, where we've been um, contacting a lot of game developers, mm -hmm. um, some indie developers, um, some big you know, AAA titles, um, and kind of talking to them, sitting them down, showing them control pad, showing them the technology. And seeing if there's a way that, that if they're aware of it, um, we I, I don't think I should drop any names of any of the studios we've met, but um, but showing them a lot of technology, a lot of the soft the game developers too there um, are kind of really blown away. They end up seeing it like okay because as I said when we first start started the stream for any of new people that came, um, for me the biggest thing with Control Pad is being able to use the mouse, yeah, and have analog control in movement in gaming because like, it, it doesn't feel like any other type of yeah use case and once you start getting used to playing with control pad when you go back to a keyboard you're like this does, doesn't feel right yeah it's it feels, almost like every 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 time you play you should have that like it's only fair it's not fair that you have to either make a choice where you want hey to be able to move and have your character walk or run or creep all at the same time um, but then your aiming sucks because you're using a controller or you just don't get that functionality but you can aim like a god you know all super right, I mean, and it's like you know you have to make that choice and i think what control pad does is it ends up giving you where you get the best of both worlds and when we show that to game developers they overwhelmingly agree yeah for sure that's the thing so it's more of sitting down getting it into their hands um, which is the most important part, having them play with it, having them see the po the potential. Like what Lance said, most of the time it's they don't even really think about it. They don't even know about it. So when we're talking about um, sometimes the game just works where it does, it just happens the way the, the way they made it is it works with mouse movement. Sometimes the games, it doesn't. And it's like trying to decide, oh, you're using a controller now. Oh, wait, no, now you're using a mouse. Oh, wait, you're using a controller. Right. And it's like getting confused. It's, it's bouncing back and forth. So to answer this question, what are we doing? Trying to make it work for every game is getting the word out, talking to these developers um, and sitting them down and being like, hey, this is some really cool stuff. This is the future yeah. of gaming. And you got to get on board. 
And, and in some cases, uh, if you're sophisticated enough, you can go into the game files themselves and Which manipulate not, it. No, but I'm you know, not. again, that's what Discord's all I'm about. I'm just a gamer. I just play games. I know, and that's the, that's the thing is, you want to be able to just plug this thing in exactly. and just not have to think about it. You just start playing, and so yeah, we're, we'll get there. Yep. I had a good question. Good from, question. Uh, Brandon. Is it a requirement to have matching facial hair to work at <laughs> I know who that is, Brandon. You're a funny guy, Brandon. And the answer is yes. <laughs> the answer is you did know that. We all have goatees here at Cooler Master. That's kind of a thing. Yeah, I mean. Even the ladies, they have to wear right. beards. It's unfortunate, but. But, you know, a rule's a rule. Rule's a rule. <laughs> you know, you got to stand up for something. You have to have, you know. If you're not a man of principles, what are you? Exactly. I don't. You know what? I wouldn't want to work here if I didn't have to have a goatee. That's how it works. Yeah, you could uh, brush your... Uh... <laughs> I'm not going to brush my goatee. <laughs> if, though I have a brush, I will not brush okay. my goatee right now. Fair enough. On camera, in front of dozens of people. Dozens. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. Um, but thank you, Brandon. I know who you are. I want to say your last name. I see your last name, and I want to say it. Um, which, another question you said. No, I'm not even going to answer that question because that's stupid. Um, so... Do you think there's an ease that I... Okay, no, this is a good one. And it kind of gets to the same question we were playing, we were just t talking about. Do you think there's an easy way to make games keep displaying only keys and forget about displaying Xbox keys? An easy way? No. An easy way, no. Um, just because it's pretty low-level stuff from the software side for the, the game, um, you'd have to get into the configuration files of the actual game and like no. force it to always show one input or the other. Uh, but modders are pretty pretty handy people so that they can they can probably come up with a solution yeah and i think um some and i think the the real the answer to that question though is the same as the previous one where yeah. we talked to developers and i believe overwatch is a game where you can choose yeah there, and it, there's a kind of a growing trend of some developers realizing this type of issue and they are enabling in lots of yeah. games i've i've been testing thousands of games so um, it's kind of his job. It's kind of a, he has I to hate, play. Has to play. I games. just have to play games again. You should see his Steam. His, his, his no, his, no one should see that. No, it's like nine hundred or something games, and and they've it's all not, been played. <laughs> yeah, and it's not like me where like yeah, I have seven hundred, but like I played like not even half of them. But it's like you see it on sale for like a dollar, and you're like, oh okay. Like, I'd be stupid. Not I'd be to stupid buy this. not to buy it for a dollar. Right. I'll never play it, but hey, take my money. Yeah. Um, but this guy actually plays every single game he ever bought. For the glory of AimPad. Yeah, and you can see it, the support list. Um, yeah, the support su list. Substantial. Huge. Um, but yeah, basically, um, to get back, to, instead of digressing, to get back to the actual question, um, yes, just reaching out to developers. I know Overwatch has uh, in the options where it says, like, I believe it's something like force controller prompts or keyboard, keyboard prompts, prompts yeah. and you just, like, choose. So... Um, that would that's really good for that one. That's I know simple, and it, it's honestly, a simple thing for them. For, it's just for them to implement because yeah. they, they've already implemented the code to say, oh, when I sense a keyboard input, I give this. When I sense a keyboard or a gamepad one, I present this. And all you have to do is just a little check mark that says force it to always show this or force it to always show yeah. that. It's like not rocket science development. It's they just need to want to do it. Yeah. So message. Let's so let's write letters. To all every, 50 everyone. whatever people that are write a letter to your favorite game developer and be like I want this no I'm just joking but no really do it yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah so I think um, I think an another game I played recently was uh, what was that um, Japanese like a Dark Souls game Japanese um, the, like Sekiro or? yeah that one had the exact same thing too so I was using it and I was like oh, okay cool I, I could force my prompts oh, and, yeah so it's coming. More games are end up doing it. So hopefully the that trend will only increase. All right. Do you plan on making more software presets or a way to easily find and share presets? So I think there's some really cool stuff that I've been putting together that uh, would be fun to share. Um, I know we could probably easily exchange it on the Discord channel. So I could probably set up like a whole like profile channel or whatever. Yeah. Um, but it would be nice to have some type of website or some other way to easily exchange this type of, of uh, configuration. But um, for now, we can definitely do it on Discord. Yeah. I think on, as we do have our website that we pulled up and a Chan linked um, into the chat, and you can probably link that again. 
Um, so that's something that we will, um, and I think getting, once again, getting the community involved more is, uh, is, is definitely something that we want to do. Right now, we have some that we're putting out. We're going to put out a lot of the ones that, uh, a lot of the keycap sets, the, dead, the like whether it's the Photoshop, Premiere Pro, I Illustrator, we want to end up kind of uh, making, like if you didn't get those sets, but let's say you got the Melky Relegible keycap set, but now you're like, hey, I want the Photoshop set too. Well, we're gonna include that as a template where you can download that and be able to, you know, um, cut it out and put it as a keycap set. Um, in terms of getting everyone, getting the community more involved on like a platform to share, I mean, that is something in the works too. We're gonna be um, kind of la launching that as well. Um, hopefully within like the next one or two months where we can, you know, maybe compile everything that you're doing too, uh, then have the community involvement with they're able to end up coming and, you know, share what you guys create because I think you guys will end up creating stuff that's probably way more better than us, mm. you know, and because you guys will be passionate, involved, and we all come together, we make this cool stuff, and we just want to get that platform for you guys to interact. So definitely. definitely a plan to do that. Um, so let's see, where am I now? I We already answered this, qu qu this question. We'll just mention it maybe one more time uh, for those that have came a little bit late. Mm -hmm would be, where's the best place to make feature requests? I really like my pad, but there are some things that I really should, uh, that I feel really should be there, like mapping controller buttons to the scroll wheel or being able to see raw analog value per key in the configurator. That would be pretty cool. That would be really cool. Yeah, so if you, if you have features that you want to uh, get added to control pad, for sure, subscribe to the uh, Discord channel. Again, it can be joined from aimpad.com slash contact and scroll down a little bit past our our uh, email contact form or whatever, and there's a join Discord button there. Awesome. Yeah, so definitely um, even those ideas right there, uh, you have that application they have open on the screen right now, the Impact Xbox controller test. Uh, that's for you to be able to check right now, the raw analog, I guess, input. You can kind of see that there. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, having that built into the software too would be a really cool feature, so. Thank yeah, definitely. Um, let's see. Will there be a version of AIMPAD with haptic feedback in the future? So we talked about haptic feedback. Um, yeah, more. yeah, that was just kind of like a, a a feeling that you get from the computer itself. So if you're you're you want some type of communication from the the, the computer to be communicated to you through the device itself, um, that would be something like vibration or. Uh, some other type of sound or response that says, hey, this thing happened, I want to let you know about it. So yeah, uh, I think it would be really, really cool to add haptic feedback where it can sense exactly when you're going to activate the key and it lets you know like with a little or a, a little vibration. Whoosh, yeah. Or yeah. A, what, what, what was that one more time? We got to say it again. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Yeah. You know, okay. that's what, when I'm typing, that's the sound that's I want to hear. That's the sound you make. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, that's cool. <laughs> Don't want this guy's problems. Let's, can't wait to get out of here. No, um, no, but yeah, haptic feedback. I think uh, we talked about it a little bit earlier in the broadcast, um, and that's something that I think um, we are looking into it. Um, version two, maybe. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, so it's just depending if we can make it work, and you know, enough people. Yeah, so definitely something we're going to be looking into. We can make it work. Yep. Um, and now I think we're going to get and start, well, we saw this a little bit, but I think seeing more of the softer questions now, I think we're now more, unless, uh, Chan, is there anyone else that, a uh, question that you think could, from the audience? Yes. Um, I think a good way to start would be, um, you know, what are your plans for creative applications? More keycaps, free download PDFs, software integration? All of the above. <laughs> and that was from Pucky. Pucky, thank you. So, um, in terms of creative applications, um, there's a good amount. I think we have another video that we'll talk about um, using MIDI, or if you use uh, creative applications in the, the music production industry. Um, there's some software that you can get that will kind of sit between Control Pad and uh, any MIDI application. Um, so if you want to control MIDI CC values and things like that, um, that's a possibility um, using Control Pad. Uh, as far as other specific programs, I, I think at the SDK, if that we'll comes definitely about, will yeah, help a lot we'll definitely with that. Help a lot. Um, but there's 
there's some additional functions and features that we want to be able to add to this. Uh, so because you, you can sense how far down the key is being pressed, we can say it's, it's at a high point or it's at a low point, and you can activate certain things that happen at those different points. Um, and a lot of that type of interaction with software can be pretty useful. Um, so for example, one use case would be like for Photoshop, if you're using the crop tool, you could have it so you push down the key a little bit with your left hand and it selects the crop tool and then you would make your crop and as, as soon as you make the crop, what happens is Photoshop will be like, are you sure you want to apply this crop, yes or no? And then you have to click your mouse and then click yes. But what you could actually do is have the first part be select the tool, make your crop and then push it down all the way and it will accept the crop. So mm. it's like a two-staged process but one key press that can be kind of a smooth type of interaction with Photoshop. Increase your efficiency and and all of that's done by like yeah. keystrokes and, and things and macros and all that type of stuff so we're, we're, we, it's not quite yet for the macros to be executed off of that that technology but it, it's that's one of the next things to be worked on so yeah. um, that will be extremely powerful for any type of creative application that has multi-staged events I guess. Yeah and I know um, the feedback we got from Kickstarter, a lot of people end up using a lot of different, basically a lot of different creative professionals in various fields that have uh, let us know all the different types of stuff that they want to use it for. Because there's hundreds of programs out there. Hundreds. It's hard to like... Only hundreds. I thought maybe thousands. Just, no, I've counted. There's just hundreds. Like hundreds. A hundred and like 17. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, yeah. So I think... Um, that's something that we are, you know, compiling the list, seeing, you know, um, I know we did a survey of how many people are using what. Uh, we have like the top five most pro, pro programs that we're going to be focusing on first. I believe the top five were all Adobe mm -hmm. programs. I think that's just, you know, the way. I think um, the the MIDI software that you were talking about, the the Appleton Live. I think that yeah. was um, another high contender. So I know there, yeah, there's a lot um, in terms of uh, software support that you know you can end up getting it working with. Definitely a lot of that we plan to do in terms of uh, the templates that was mentioned. Mm -hmm. As we said, that's something that we want to end up um, working even more, and that community platform is really going to tie everything together. So it's if you have um, someone out 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 there, I think it's already happening. People are already saying, "Hey, I made this cool stuff. Um, I made this key cap set and whatnot." I think um, that's something that. Uh, you'd be able to share, hopefully share, not be greedy and be like, this is just mine, mm -hmm. but you share it with everyone else and be able to um, you know, interact and have other people download your creation and use it. Um, that would be really cool. Definitely. I'm really super, super excited for when that platform will launch. Oh yeah, no, I'm done with this. I just picked it up, force of habit. Was there any other um, question, Chan? Um, I don't know how much we want to go into detail, but nothing. I, Secrets. <laughs> so I mean, so it, it it is a legitimate uh, concern because the the thumb has a lot of uh, dexterity and control, and right now on control pad it's just the A button and maybe this other one that you can kind of reach these ones here, but it's not like effectively leveraging that. So I yeah. think there there's a lot of potential for a potential new new product or something like that um, that we're evaluating what what to do but um yeah i think there's potential yeah do you know um why we ended up going with a more of a this type of format versus like an orb weaver a hand thingy um i think what we were trying to focus on with this product was to make it more of a mass appeal um if you have like mm. an orb weaver sitting on your desk on a professional setting it looks a little gamerish to the point that it's like, I don't know. If, if you like the, the or Weaver, that's fine. You're you're still a good person. Um, Maybe <laughs> I, I I have one and I can't stand it because of the way my hand is shaped. I can't actually reach all the keys, so it's not ergonomic for me if I have to like remove my wrist from that wrist rest to reach everything. Anyways, but that's me. Other people love it because they have bigger hands or whatever but yes <laughs> so, i was gonna make a joke i can't do that <laughs> filter yeah filter um, okay. so yeah I, I think but but this has a nice clean look and um 
we were focused on trying to make it so customizable with the keycap sets and all that type of thing. Um, so I think it fits that well, and it's still it, it's it's a very well built and solid product that's not like a something to be embarrassed to have on your desk. On your desk, yeah, yeah. And I think um, yeah, I, I think you said that very nicely. Um, I think that's uh, mainly, and I know we ended up getting as 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 we said, we ended up. Um, interacting a lot with people on Kickstarter to get feedback about the product. One thing that we changed um, in the very beginning was, um, for example, a detachable USB Type-C kit cable. Yeah. That was something where it was like, okay, design-wise, what is this thing? Uh, overwhelmingly, people wanted that. So it was like, okay, let's quickly, we'll change the design, push that out. Um, it takes, and it took time. It did take time. Um, to the chagrin of some people, but I did take it. It, um, it did take time. I think it makes it a lot more because, especially if it's something where it's like, hey, we want this to be portable. We want it to be maybe if you're working, yeah. you can take it somewhere. Having that detachable cable, it really made a lot of sense. Um, so we we wanted to just quickly implement that. Um, what some other people said too was like, hey, well, what about this? The design overall. Um, why not make it like that hand thing, mm -hmm. like the orb weaver or something? Um, and I think. Um, yeah, our philosophy, you kind of hit it on the nail, to uh, appeal to a, a more wider range. Um, we definitely thought of the control pad more as a companion to your keyboard. Um, so instead of, I know it's something like, it's probably something like 50-50. So like maybe 50% of um, backers are using it primarily for gaming and about 50% wanted it for more of a creative applications. Mm -hmm. um, I know that gamers um, overwhelmingly wanted something that would be a little bit more gamerish. Um, but I think with something like this, where it's like, okay, it's something that can sit on your desk, both at work and play, mm -hmm. and you get the functionality. You know, you get the functionality of it. You can bring it to work. You're not embarrassed because you're like, hey, look at me, I'm a cool gamer guy. Um, but and you're working with it. So I think that that was the idea behind that. Um, it's definitely something moving forward. A lot of different, as I said, this is only the beginning of con of control pad. It really is. And so uh, in the future, we're definitely going to be collecting a lot more feedback, seeing like, hey, maybe multiple versions. Mm -hmm. Maybe we do have one that's more, you know, has that type of wrist uh, elevated for, you know, more of like a gaming type setup or utilizing your thumb to do different things. Um, yeah, it's definitely something. But for the first product, something that came out, nice little companion piece to your keyboard. I think it fits the mass market needs. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. All right. Another question from... Uh, yeah, Vin B asked, best way to open up the Religionables? Best way to open up the Religionables. That's actually... You're the professional. I'm the professional yeah, on this. absolutely. Um, I don't know if we can see. You wanted to do the top camera? So there is kind of like a little trick. And watch me totally mess it up here. But um, I know we. I saw some, some, some people mention it. Uh, the fact that, hey, you can pop it off and use like a tweezer or something to pull it out. Um, that is one way. Don't do that. But don't do that because that is... Um, it would, scratches it. It scratches it and yeah. takes a lot of time. Um, there is a little trick where basically if you take your index finger, put it up on the top of the key, and take your thumb and put it down on the, on the bottom on the opposite end. And you basically kind of just push up with your thumb a little bit, do a little bit of a little shake, and then it pops right, right on off. I didn't see you shake. You got to well, shake. not my body uh, shaking. Come on, Lance. Be serious. This is a live stream, okay? God. Sorry, yeah. But yeah, just like that, and it pops off. And yet, so it's something where it's like, you know, the keys are fine, they're not coming off, but just that, um, I don't know, science physics of it, I don't know, uh, it just comes right on off. So I think it's a little bit harder for this one, mm -hmm. just because of how you get your finger uh, um, around it, but yeah, pretty much all the other ones, you kind of just grip it from a little bit of the bottom and it pops right on off. So just like that. And, and as you can see, those are paper templates that they just cut out. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and, and it's Share backlightable, like. Oh yeah, and of course it's back backlit. Um, do you mind doing this wrong? Like this. Here we go. Yeah. Oh. Oh, I totally wow. messed that up. I whiffed it. That was. I whiffed it. Unremarkable. Sorry, because like I'm leaning over you, Lance. I know. You don't want to get. And I don't want to get too close because of the. No, I'm not gonna say it again. <laughs> the c word. Because <laughs> of the c word. Um, yeah, so that that is a little trick. Um, I believe we want to uh, we'll do a little video of, of that showing that um, how to kind of remove it. Uh, we'll post that on kick Kickstarter to kind of show um, that there is a way to quickly kind of do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So no tweezers. Don't use tweezers. Um, yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. I mean, it just takes way too much time, and you might scratch it. 
Yeah. Who likes scratches? No one wants scratches. Not me. No. All right. Another question from the audience. Um, is there a way to use an external device, Arduino with additional buttons, for example, as a way to switch presets without having to use to control bad buttons? Boy. Um, maybe. I don't know how much of it is exposed to the operating system for other external programs to like force a profile switch. Uh, we'd have to talk to the software team to see what that looks like, but maybe. Maybe. There, I mean, it's it's not too bad. You have two scroll wheels, so uh, one way you can configure is the scroll wheels could actually change through all the profiles, um, which works in some cases. Um, this might be useful to show people though. Um, this is what I like to do to set up a, a profile that sets up other profiles. It's, so it's kind of a two-stage process, but since there's 24 profiles, that's a lot of configuration that's that you can lot. have. But what I like to do is set up profile 24 to be like a profile selector. So I kind of have it set up here right now. This is number seven. But let's say I want key number one to be profile one, key number two, profile two, and so on. So basically all of these are set up for all the possible profiles that you would be selecting. Um, and when we apply that, what you can do is when you go to another profile, let's say profile 18, uh, you can have profile 24 be mapped to prof or I'm sorry, that key be mapped to profile 24. So what happens is when you push this key, it switches you to profile 24, which allows you to select the other profiles. So then I can go profile one, and now profile one is active. So anytime I want to switch to other profiles, I hit this one to be the profile selector, and then I can select which profile I want to activate on the fly. So you're basically creating a profile for other profiles. Yeah, it's like profileception. Profileception. Yeah. That's cool. Mm -hmm. You should copyright that. I kind of should, yeah. Yeah. Um, but no, I think that's something that, um, and I believe, yeah, we've received quite questions um, that kind of based off of that. Um, it's kind of turning it into, because, yeah, we have 24 pro, pro profiles. I know most of our other keyboards and everything we're talking about ends up having, like, five. And yeah. I know in the very beginning it was, like, 24. Like, is that a little bit overkill? No. But you know what? It's not, especially if you can do something like what Lance just said, where you bind one key to be your profile selector, if you will. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, so it's like, if you're, if you're gaming, you're, you know, you're, you have your Photoshop, you have a bunch of different stuff, uh, different games, you can have different, you know, like one through five or all my different games, the top five games that I play. And then whenever you start it, boom, you just hit your profile key, hit that game, you're ready to go. Yeah. And like, so some other feedback that we've received has been things like, well, can you make it so it's like a temporary switch to the profile? So if you hold down this key, it activates that other profile so you can select a function or whatever but when you release it it sends you back to where you were before on the oh, other profile so you can have like layers and layers of profile it truly is profile section yeah we're Especially not there yet not but there it, yet it, it, i think that's a pretty cool feature yeah nice all right um any other questions um none from the chat but we should announce that we are going to be uploading a lot of content on the yes Yes, we did mention that at the beginning, but I know people have been trickling in over the course of this hour. I don't know how long we've been streaming for. Yeah, I don't know. About, about an hour. Wow, dude, time does fly when you're having fun. I'm mm. having a blast. Yes. Um, but yeah, we have a lot of – that's why Lance is here. I think that's how we kind of started this show off. Like, like, Lance, why are you even here? Like, And the reason why he is here is because we've been filming a lot of content with him, a lot of videos – um, that we're going to be e editing and you know pumping out there, showing you guys all the different cool things. Really, not all of them because it's endless. Mm -hmm. Like a handful, like twelve. Like we'll be showing you twelve different things that we can do. Um, in the, that's only the time we had to film when you were here. So you got to come back. Okay, next week. <laughs> we we got to do twelve more uh, in a week. Uh, but yeah, there's a, definitely a lot, a lot of stuff, um, and we're just going to really kick it into high gear um, starting next month of all the different things that you can do showing you guys a lot of different content um and maybe some of the stuff you guys did know maybe you didn't so definitely subscribe to our this channel um if you want to you know get notified of all that content in the beginning uh, as soon as we pump it out there absolutely yeah absolutely uh, really good question um will i be able to program the control pad as a twitch deck so similar to like uh the stream deck uh with the sdk Nah. Um, just sort of, I would say. 
Switch deck for or like anything that the the stream deck can do, this could actually do pretty well. The similar as long as uh, there's keystrokes or commands that can execute those things for certain programs. Obviously, if you use the auto hotkey, for sure you can do it. Um, yeah. As far as the the animations, were you talking about animations on the keypad itself, or I'm just talking about like the like RGB? Yeah. I think so basically something like, hey, you wanted maybe one key to start flashing or doing some stuff like that. So there, there is an SDK for other Cooler Master products. I don't know if it has, the, that's something we should need to ask yeah, if that's yet. been added or not, but yeah. um, prob probably not yet, but it, it should be added so that you can use an SDK to add lighting effects specifically for control pad. It's not there yet, but yeah. Yeah, okay, awesome. Basically, if a game has controller support, it will at least have partial support. Yeah, the, that's the rule of thumb. Um, if you're able to use a kind of, and then then, if you go ahead, you want to hit I, that? No, I've I've never actually played Ark, so I don't yeah. know for sure. Out of the 900 games you have, I know you no don't have Ark. Ark. It's Ark one of the free ones? Isn't that one of the ones? No, maybe not. It's because my friends just started me playing Factorio last night, and now my life is basically over. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, that's his next assignment. <laughs> is to download ARC. Okay, I'll, I'll get on that. <laughs> we'll set it downloading right now. Uh, we'll let you know in a few hours now. I'm just, but um, yeah, if it has, if ARC has controller support, it will at least work partially. Um, it might be a thing where the mouse and kind of like what we mentioned before, whether the developer included um, con controller and mouse movement at the same time. I, and I if I remember correctly, I think ARC uses the Unreal Engine and like Unreal Engine is like 90 to 95% always works so if if it is using that engine i'm pretty confident it will work okay all right yeah cool next um that's about it uh i told chat to keep questions coming and i will ask you so okay yeah. um well, I do see one from a guy asking, what's the best way to contact Cooler Master for getting the tier rewards? If for some reason you still haven't gotten your rewards, message Cooler Master on Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, we've had... The camera's turned off. We've had... Um, yeah, I don't know why that happens. We're back. No. Um, <laughs> it's live. It's live. That's right. It's doing... We're doing it live. No, I'm not going to say that word. Um... But yeah, no, definitely contact uh, Cool Master. Uh, send them a direct message on Kick Kickstarter. We'll figure out what happened. Um, some, you know, whatever it might just be a shipping thing. It might be some specific order. I know, for example, some of our friends in Japan and Korea. Um, this because of the address, the way they gave us their addresses. Um, like, where it's all in Japanese or Korean, and apparently we had an issue when it came to actually starting to ship. Um, so we've been trying to, we still haven't contacted everyone. So if you happen to be a friend from Japan and you haven't gotten yours yet, uh, definitely uh, contact us. Give us your English address uh, or your address in English. Probably makes more sense. And um, yeah, we'll see if we can get that out to you right away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other question? I like when we have to like lean in to see the questions. <laughs> yeah. Like we're really involved. But um, no, yeah, like. The other questions that I was going to say were basically like, how, how do we contact you for this issue? And yeah, let's yeah. Let's go to the Kickstarter. Yeah, for sure. Go to the Kickstarter. So, yeah, any more questions? If not, I mean, we've already gone for like quite a, an hour and a half. Almost, yeah. I think we were planning an hour, but, you know, as we said, time flies when you're just having a good time. Having a good time. Yeah. Mm. So, when are you going back? Tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm. Early flight. Where do you live? Indiana. No, I want your address for they, they for them to contact and you and my cell phone number and your cell phone. They need to be able to write you underwear size and, and be like names. and be like, dear Lance, the aim pad, blah blah blah. Dear Lance, I mean Indiana's not that big. Everybody knows me, so everyone knows him. Just be like, hey, I'm here to see Lance, right? The aim pad guy. Just show up on the border and they'll let you in. I think there's like one only one other Lance, <laughs> right? Yeah. He's like a trucker or something, so I think that's fine. Yeah, yeah. He still has a good tea, but it, everyone does. So. Yeah, everyone does. I cool master. <laughs> so, yeah, I think we're ending in five minutes. Um, so get your questions in. If not, we just have to kind of kill time. Did you play something? For Yeah, dude, pull it up. Let's show them some stuff. 
I think we were going to do more of uh, some more gaming stuff, right? What was that one question? Oh, my bad. Right yeah. Forecast, how can I assign horizontal slash vertical scroll to analog? Yeah, see, how could you forget about fried pork? I, try, I, try. I have a long list of I know, he's delicious. So, how would we do that? Yeah. Um, so, basically, it's not possible yet, but what, what would, uh, I would recommend when the feature becomes available. So, right now, um, there is mouse control for control pad that you can control the mouse cursor, but it's not analog. It's not, not doesn't move based on how you push it. Um, but what we could do is have like a two staged uh, event so that at the very top of the press, it actually presses the middle click of a mouse and then uh, the other directions would move the mouse cursor in those directions. So you could basically, I don't know, there's a, yeah, so it, it basically be replicating this type of, of interaction where based off of how far down you push the key, it would be moving the mouse fast or slow, like that type of response. Um, but it, it's not built into the software yet. Um, but I think it should be coming. Yeah. Yeah. No, definitely analog control for the mouse is something that's going to be um, built in for sure. Just a matter of time. Coronavirus. Yeah, I mean, there's probably some plugins for yeah. uh, like for Chrome or something like that that you could probably load that would say, hey, use the Xbox controller to scroll my page. Um, and then it would work in that they sense. It would work in that sense, yeah. yeah. Okay. Awesome. Any... Uh, what about daisy chaining the control pad as soon as one or another? Daisy chaining, like a, creating an Having ortho multiple. linear. Yeah, like plugging one into another and then into a desktop. Kind of like a control. control pad centipede? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there's only one one uh, input, so you can't like daisy chain them off of each other, but can you have multiple control pads? Yes. Um, and they will show up as separate devices in the Cooler Master software. So you can configure one and apply its configuration and apply the other, and they're unique to each other. So technically you could have like two control pads set up for an ortholinear like keypad. You'd have two cables coming off of it, um, but you could have that full typing experience with two of them. Just have your left hand configured on the left side of the keyboard there and the right side here, and yeah. Yeah. I think you would have to get three. Forehead, yeah. You'd have to get three. Two, that's it's not enough. Gotta get three. Yeah, that's that's just not. I know. Come on. That's rookie numbers, right Seriously. there. Seriously, right? if you're gonna get, if you want more than one, gotta get three. Okay. Yeah. So in May. <laughs> I mean, you could technically use your feed too. Why just stop? Yeah. Why? Why? Why stop there? Right. Um, but that's cool. I didn't know you could really do that. Um, not daisy chaining at least, but having them at, work at the same time. What about the player one thing? Um. Yeah. So you're. you're you're gonna have one that's gonna show up as player one, whichever one you plug in first. But, yeah, yeah. but uh, you could still technically use it. You're saying, but just maybe not. Yeah. Not. Yeah. Not for. I think the use case that they were presenting would be like, just like using an it as an ortho, ortho linear keyboard, keyboard. Just so you're typing like yeah. this, and you can have your comfortable angle this way or whatever. It's like a pro gamer. <laughs> right. Oh, um, good question. When will CM release patch notes for these? For like the software updates. Mm. When soon? The, so in their defense, defense yeah, I they, think they, they have started, started adding yeah. some releases. Because I know we ended up receiving some um, some feedback about that on Kickstarter because uh, there's like these like little shadow updates that are coming out. And um, yeah, we did feedback to the team, and I believe yeah, that's we are starting. There, to There's not that. super detailed. I think is what they would probably want to see. Like these were all the things that were changed. It's kind of yeah. like bugs were fixed and we added support for this device and yeah. things like that which is a good step in the right direction but i think they want like resolve issue with this bug and that type of thing yeah because i believe there was one that we ended up saying um i think i might have ended up skipping that question i thought we had that one question that was saying like hey when i'm going to be able to use um the oh, yeah. controller and mouse uh and uh the controller and keyboard functions and be able to program them on the same yeah, because when, yeah. when it first came out, first came out, you couldn't have like Xbox controllers and like the space bar, which was just like, like a bug. Yeah, it was you know, it was intended for it to be that way. It just yeah. was not released that way. Yeah, but they did fix it, and we a, did fix it. In um, so that was like I think five, six questions straight up from people um, immediately when they got oh, it, yeah. and it was like, oh wait, okay, 
Like, um, this has to be fixed now. <laughs> and I think, and I think we did, and I think we fixed it within like the week. Um, and so, yeah, but having those patch notes come out where exactly what we did, um, as detailed as possible, will definitely end up passing on that feedback to the team, mm -hmm. um, and moving forward, hopefully we can get more detailed for for you guys. They might be in Chinese, but you can have one. Google Translate. <laughs> Just saying, or or I can translate for you guys. That's true. All right, anyway. All right, and this is, I guess, the cut off for the questions. Anything else? You may contact Lance directly, as I said, either <laughs> through email, <laughs> phone call, <laughs> writing. But most probably, the best bet is his Discord, which is where you can find it again on aimpad.com/slash contact. And That's I'll be right. Linking all those right now, along with our Kickstarter, where you guys can ask any more questions. Yep. To that handsome man on on, on the right, right there. Yeah. Well, both of them are handsome. I don't know. No. Anyone that's with nice. a goatee is handsome. It's, that's why everybody. All of Cooler Master. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All handsome. All handsome. Um, no. Can. Yeah. So definitely um, subscribe, follow us, like us. Please like me. No, like us <laughs> and. Uh, I think get 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 notified. I think it's you not even follow. I think you have to hit the bell to say you want to get notified That's what they all when we say. come out the, with the you videos. Smash the bell with smash such the bell. Hit the bell. It wakes tap it. The depths of hell. Yes. Yeah. Do something with the bell, um, <laughs> so you get notified when we come out with new content for you guys, specifically for Aimpad. Because I think in the next few weeks it's pri primarily just going to be Aimpad. It's going to be a lot of analog, all up in your face. So in somewhere else. <laughs> Someone Come on, with coincidentally the same last name Madsen says, this might not be the time or place, but I think Lance Madsen is the hottest gamer slash engineer of the awesomeness I've ever seen. Hey, I I wonder who disagree. that could be. Hmm. Is that maybe Miss Madsen? It, or my girlfriend. Or your girlfriend. One of his girlfriends, right? Because there's so many. Because <laughs> he's so hot. Right. <laughs> Hi, sweetie. Oh, oh. Hmm. What happened? My wife didn't say anything. My wife should be like, hey, he's kind of hot. But anyways, um, <laughs> yeah, so uh, Control Pad, we're going to be coming out with it. Um, uh, officially on retail, we have Cherry switches, Gateron switches, different top plate colors, silver, gunmetal gray, midnight black. Mm. Um, a lot of different um, uh, cho choices for you guys to make, a lot of different templates. So all that stuff's going to be available. Um, definitely, you can end up... Uh, we're going to be making posts on that. You can check it out on our CM store, Amazon, probably. Um, because of what's happening in the world right now, a lot of it is delayed. So it's probably going to be May. We're looking at May launch time when it actually does end up coming out for purchase. Um, so, yeah, definitely keep an eye out for that. If you're not one of the lucky 1,013 people that got it Very on lucky. Kickstarter. Yeah. Those, those are lucky guys. Sorry for everyone else. Um, all right. I guess that's just a sign-off. I think yeah. we're good. All right. And that's a wrap. That's a wrap. See you guys next time. All right.